Hi there, today we're going to be looking at the second part of the collections lab. Uh, we're starting at page 3 because uh, it's dictionaries. Uh, the first two pages were arrays. So let's get started. Okay, create a variable of type string int dictionary that can be used to look up uh, the number of days in a particular month. Use the dictionary literal to initialize it with January, February, and March. January contains 31 days, February has 28 days, and March has 31 days print the dictionary. So let me explain a few things first. A dictionary has what we call a key and a value. So in this case the key is of type string and the value is of type int. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to call this dictionary, um, uh, well it's going to be um, look up number of days. So I'm going to call it number of days dictionary. All right so whatever call it whatever you want to call it. And then to do a dictionary, we're going to uh, um, explicitly say the type, and they're telling us what type it's going to be. So it's going to be of type string, which is the key, and the value is going to be of type int. Okay, and then we're going to initialize it with, and they're tell telling us to initialize it with January, right? So January, right? So that's the key for the first um, element, and the value is 31 days because they're telling us January has 31 days. Cool. The second uh, element, February. Okay, it's pretty cool. And that's the key for the second element. We need to give it a value and they're telling us 28 days. All right, great. And lastly, the third thing that we're putting in here is March. And that is the key for the third element. And the value for the third element is 31 because they're telling us that there's 31 days. And now they're telling us print a uh, number of days, print the dictionary. So let's go ahead and run this so far and let's have a look. Surely enough, it shows me the three elements, okay? Now this is not in the order that we typed it um, and that's how um, dictionaries kind of work. Uh, if you're used to an array, an array, they're always ordered from the first element to the last. Dictionaries are sort of jumbled up. Um, the way you look them up is you look them up by their key. Um, so that's that's how you look up things in dictionaries. Okay, using a subscripting syntax to add April to the collection with a value of 30. Print the dictionary. Sure. Okay, so what's our dictionary called? Number of days. So number of days. And we uh, open um, the, um, the square braces and we type in um, April. Okay, and we give it a value of 30. Let me go ahead and close the uh, quotes here, and we go equals 30. So what we're saying is, we're saying, listen, take number of days dictionary, add this uh, key to it, and the value for this key is 30. So if I go ahead and print num number of days, it should show me that it has added April now to the list. Okay, awesome. Let's move on. It's a leap year. Update the number of days in February to 29 using the update value for key method. Print the dictionary. So every dictionary, dictionaries are structures just like um, arrays, just like integers, just like strings. Um, and like all structures that Apple has built for you, they have methods or functions. So there's a method or function called update value for dictionaries. And it takes in um, a parameter. So let's have a look here. So our dictionary is called number of days, number of days, and it's telling us we're going to update it using the dot update value. Update value. Um, so it takes in a value of type in, and it takes a string. Um, uh, it takes a key of type string. So how do we do this? Well, they're telling us the value here is 29, and the string, uh, the key is uh, February. Uh, I gotta spell that perfectly right, February. Okay, uh, and make sure that I spelled it the same way here with a capital F because this is literally the key. If um, these are string literals, if I put a lowercase f here, that won't work. So it has to be perfectly spelled. It has to be spelled identically. Cool, so let's go ahead and print the dictionary, which is number of days. If I go ahead and print it, Surely enough, it shows me the same thing as before, except for February, I had 28, now it says 28, 29, rather. All right, perfect. Moving along. 
Okay, what's the next thing that we're doing here? Use if let syntax to retrieve the number of days under January. If the value is there, print January has 31 days, where 31 is the value retrieved from the dictionary. Okay, so not too hard. So if let January, um, you could, you know, you could call this whatever you want. We're creating a brand new uh, constant here. Um, how do you spell January? J-A-N-U-A-R-Y. So we're going to call it January temp value, right? Um, equals um, equals number of days. And we're going to go, we're going to use the key here. Again, this is tricky here because I want to make sure that I spell it the exact same way. Okay. So, so I'm saying, listen, look at this, uh, look at this dictionary and go and look at this key. Okay. Um, so we do have a key called January number of days, and then we're going to print. What are we going to print? We're going to print, uh, we're going to print a statement. So use if let syntax to retrieve the number of days in January, the value is there print. Okay. So what we're going to print is Jan, you worry has the following number of days and we're gonna do this and we're gonna say uh, January temp value cool so let's go ahead and run this and it says 31 January has the following number of days so let me explain what I did here in the if let statement if you're familiar with if let this should be pretty uh, clear if you're not here's what I've done here um, if let statements essentially uh, is a safe way of checking so I'm saying listen Go into this dictionary, right? We read right to left, saying go into this dictionary and look at this key, look for the key January. If you find it, there is such a key in this dictionary, then take the value for that key, whatever the value is, and put it in this variable that we just created. Cool. And then inside the curly braces, I could execute whatever. These, the code inside the curly braces only executes if there is a value for January and it gets stored in here. So I'm saying print the statement and I used the backslash here is uh, it's what we call escaping the quotes. So essentially you could put a variable in here. So I put this uh, string literal statement and the value in here, the January temp value. Okay, cool. Moving on. Uh, given the following um, arrays, uh, create a new string, right? So that's the key string and the value is an array of strings dictionary shapes array sh uh, should use the key shapes and uh, color array should use the colors uh, should use the key colors um, uh, print the resulting dictionary okay let's see how we're gonna do that so we're gonna create a dictionary we're gonna call it um, I don't know um, um, another <laughs> dictionary they didn't give me the name so we're going to call this another dictionary and it's going to be of type string the, the the key is of type string and the value is going to be an array of strings cool okay and what are we going to give it here we're going to give it a let's see here create a dictionary shapes array should use the key um, should use the key shapes and the color array should use the key colors. Uh, print the resulting dictionary. Got it. Okay. So what we're doing is this. Um, they're telling us to put shapes in here. Shapes. Uh, did they use uppercase? Yes, they did. So shapes for the key. And for the array, we're putting in the shapes array. So that's the first element in this dictionary. So this dictionary, the first element holds actually a um, uh, an array inside of it. Um, I don't need to put the brackets because that's what the error was yelling at me for because shapes array is already an array. And the second element in here is going to be uh, colors. And um, the array, the value for colors is colors array. So this dictionary cannot convert value of type to string of course literally made the same mistake again 
Okay. So let's have a look here. Um, so we've created a dictionary called another dictionary and it takes for key, it takes a string for the key and for the value, it takes a array of strings. So for the key of the first element, we call the shapes and the value is this whole array. That whole array is one element. The second element, the key is this and the value is this whole array. So this dictionary holds arrays in it. Cool. Um, what do they want us to do with this? Print the resulting dictionary, sorry. So print um, another dictionary, that's what we called it, right? So if we print, let's see what we get here. Let's have a look. Shapes, and then we get this whole array, and then colors, and we get this whole array. Okay, pretty cool. So the last thing in this page, print the last element of colors array, accessing it through the dictionary you've created. Uh, you'll have to use if let syntax or the bang operator to unwrap what uh, what is returned from the dictionary before you can access the element of the array. Okay, so let's use if let. If let is a safe way of doing it. If let, I'm going to call it. Um, so print the last element of array. So if let last element temp, I'm going to call it, equals, um, uh, we called our dictionary another dictionary. And we're going to say, listen, go and look for um, the key colors in this dictionary. OK, if you find it, if you find it, please take the value and assign it here. And OK, so now we've done this and now I'm going to print uh, last element temp. Now, last element temp, it's going to be uh, it's going to be what does it ask me here? Uh, last element of a uh, of colors array. Well, colors array has three elements: zero, one, two. So the last element would be number two. So I gotta say number two here. So it should print blue here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, run that. And surely enough, it prints blue. Cool. So that's page three. All right, moving on. Page four. Okay, page four. Uh, in the previous app exercise, you've written code to help users with uh, run pacing you decide what you could use um, a dictionary um, you decide that you could use a dictionary to let users store different paces um, that they regularly run at or do interval training in create a dictionary paces of type string double so the key is going to be string the value is going to be double and assign it a dictionary literal with easy medium and fast keys corresponding to values of 10 8 and 6 these numbers correspond to mile pace in minutes print the dictionary okay that's a pretty easy thing to do var uh, we're going to call it paces that's what they're telling us to call it actually and um, string double because that's what they told us the dictionary should be of and the first key is going to be easy and that will have a value of 10.0 the second key is going to be medium and that is going to have a value of 8.0 and the third uh, key is going to be hard or rather fast and it's going to have a value of 6.0 and now I print the dictionary called paces and if we print this surely enough we get the dictionary okay cool let's move on here add a new key value uh, paired to the dictionary. The key should be sprint and the value uh, should be four. Okay, so how do you do this? Well, our dictionary is called paces. So paces, we could use a method called update value and we could give it a value of type double. Well, it's 4.0 and for the key, we're going to say sprint uh, S-P-R-I-S-P-R-I-N-T. Um, Beautiful. Okay, and we're going to print paces, and surely enough, it prints. Cool. All right, let's move on here. Uh, imagine the user in question gets faster over time and decides to update his or her pacing on runs. Update the values of medium and fast to 7.5 and 5.8 respectively. Print the dictionary. All right, so how do we do that? So we're going to go um, uh, paces, which is the name of our dictionary, dot... 
um, update value update value uh, there we go update value and we're gonna say um, for the key we're gonna say medium and for the um, for the value is 7.5 cool and I'm gonna do that again paces dot update value for the uh, key we're gonna say uh, fast and the new value is gonna be 5.8 cool now if I print the dictionary I should have the updated values surely enough um, sprint is the same fast is 5.8 as opposed to 6 and medium is 7.5 as opposed to 8 okay great cool um, imagine the user in question decides not to store sprint as one of his her regular paces remove sprint from the dictionary print the dictionary all right so how do we remove something so again we call up our dictionary called paces and there's a function called um, remove value we have to give it the key and the key is sprint s p r i n t oh, and that should remove it now if we print our dictionary it should be updated with no sprint sprint is gone beautiful okay um, i guess last question when a user chooses a pace you want the app to print a statement stating that it will keep him her on pace imagine a user chooses medium accessing the value from the dictionary print a statement saying okay i'll keep you at and then you put the value of the pace here minutes per uh, pace okay so how do you do something like this again pretty easy we have to use if let so if let um, our um, we're going to call it uh, pace uh, variable okay and we go uh, paces right that's our dictionary we're gonna and we're gonna open the um, the uh, square brackets and we're gonna put in the key here so for medium and we're gonna print a statement print and uh, we're gonna print a statement I'm literally gonna copy and paste this I can't copy it for some reason okay so I have to type it okay I'll I'm awful at typing today I'll keep you at a and the pace well the pace is uh, should be placed here so pace variable uh, minutes mile pace or whatever they are asking me to put here but essentially that's how you would do it so if I would print this it'll say okay I'll keep you at 7.5 minutes a mile a pace uh, that's because we chose medium if I change this to fast obviously this would change to 5.8 if I change this to uh, easy that would obviously change to um, of course see nothing printed because there is no such thing as east it's easy and if I print it I'll, uh, I'll say 10 all right, that's pretty much the second part of uh, second part of the chapter of um, collections dictionaries. Hope you've enjoyed this, and have a wonderful day.